Hello again, it's Jonathan at the Piano Lesson. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, and uh, I'm just going to kind of do a stream of consciousness today and see what I come up with. Uh, kind of a grab bag of fun things to, to work on. You know, we're all uh, pressed for time, right? Uh, we, we have a lot of stuff to practice. We don't know what to practice necessarily. Um, if you can't practice anything else, I uh, have it on very good authority that the single best thing to work on, technically, are sixths, practicing sixths. So that's the thing that's really going to get your hand in shape, okay? So, uh, what's a sixth? Well, it's when you have six, the notes are six notes apart, okay? And there's different kinds of sixes, major six and minor six, typically, but, you know, Here's what a six looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a sixth, okay? And here's what I mean by practicing sixth. So I'm going to actually start higher in the piano. I'm going to start up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a minor sixth. Why is that a minor sixth? Well, because in the key of E, the sixth note is not C. It's actually C sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the lowered six. That's a minor six. It doesn't really matter, but. Here's a really groovy exercise. Two and five, okay? One and four. Now, watch this. I'm gonna flip to two and five again. See that? Play the same notes. One and four. Two and five. 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 One and four. And that's as far as you can go, okay? That, it really kind of gets your hand in shape. What, what, why does that get your hand in shape? Well, one of the things it does is it kind of helps to establish what we call the bridge in, in the hand. You know, we see people playing the piano a lot of different ways. I mean, there's no one absolute right way to play. I mean, there's various reasons why one might want to do one thing over another. But I can, again, have it on pretty good authority that um, in general, uh, the way you... Uh, get your sound and power, right, is by establishing this bridge, just like, kind of like in, in a game of pool, right? You know, you, you have the pool cue and you, you, you figure out, you set up the, the bridge, you know, kind of, right? That's kind of what you're doing here. Right in here is where, kind of where you get your, your strength from. And keeping that, you know, I used to, I used to have a teacher that said, it kind of feels like hard rubber, okay? And this is this is where you want to have the activity. If you're really not doing that, you're not really playing the piano. You don't want to be muscling it with your arm, okay? Um, you can't, <clears throat> um, and you need that bridge because you have to be able to play with a certain amount of weight. If you don't have that bridge, you're, everything's just going to kind of collapse. But that exercise with the six really helps to helps you to keep that bridge, okay? Uh, it's an, it's an awkward feeling, but who said playing the piano was natural? It's, it's not natural. It's very unnatural, you know, really. Um, the only thing that's natural about it, I suppose, is that it, it, we use gravity, right? We use gravity, the weight of our arm. Um, we, want to, we want to be able to use this, this arm weight, okay? So, two, five, one, four. Now, notice what I'm doing here. I'm connecting all the notes. Now, that happens to be in a C major scale. Ideally, you want to do that with other scales, okay? G major. Now, when I do this, right, when I play it in G, you'll notice something. 2, 5, B, G, A, F sharp. That's a bigger stretch. That's a different feeling. This is a much different feeling than doing this, all right? That's why you do it in different keys, all right? And it's, it's, it's challenging, right? And that's that's a complete exercise. D major. That's harder. And I'm kind of sitting sideways, uh, sideways on the piano. I played around it there. Right? Okay. D major. Um, uh, uh, a, uh, uh, that was two sharps. A major, three sharps. practices enough. E major, four sharps, right? Keep going. Um, 
bad for not practicing at all, okay? But here's how, you know, ideally, now you could also do chromatic, watch this, chromatic, chromatic, oh, what did I do here? I messed up, sorry. There we go. Get it? Did I do that right? Uh, no, I didn't. That's it, right there. Yeah. So you wanna you wanna start on that, and you wanna end on that. Ideally, going down chromatic, all twelve notes, and I'm replacing those fingers, so I'm learning to play legato. Okay. Uh, now, just like any exercise, you want to not only practice in different keys, but you want to practice it with different phrasing. Of course, I could, could ascend too. Let's just talk about ascending for a moment. So, ascending. And I just happen to be doing this with the right hand, right? You could you also do it with the left hand as well. And then you can do both hands in the sixths. Surprised I haven't really practiced that. I'm actually able to almost do it. Um, so ascending and descending, right? Um, one hand, two hands, parallel, and also contrary. Might sound a little weird. Kind of have to figure out what notes are going to sound best. Here I'm starting on the same notes in both hands. Maybe I don't want to do that. I don't know. I'm starting here, I'm starting on E and C, and here I'm starting on C and A. It almost sounds like you could you could even do some I don't know, fancier, fancier things, changing key perhaps, or you know, but that's the idea. So that's the legato. Two note slur is very useful. Long, short, long, short, long, short. Now when you make the short note, I think in general it's good to do it from the elbow. All right, um, so you drop, lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, as if you're tearing those keys out. Kind of, or you can start short, short, long, short, long, short. That's that's harder. That's the opposite. But let's do long, short. You hear that all the time classical music, that kind of thing, those, those two-note slurs. Of course, you can do three-note slurs too, right? Now, I, I modified the, the exercise slightly. One, two, three. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. I mean, be creative with the exercises. You know, the, the exercises can be really fun. They're, they're only as interesting as you make them, okay? Uh, again, you know, chromatic or, or other keys, um, but getting that stretch, building that bridge. So when you approach the piano, it just becomes second nature. You 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 have that you have that strength. In it was kind of described to me again by one of my teachers. It was oh, it's almost like um, a, ba a ballet dancer learning to stand on toe. Okay. And and you, you 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 kind of have to you can you can kind of push away you can just kind of push away with the finger as well but balancing the weight on that fingertip. Notice my arm isn't moving very much. There's a, but there's a lot of activity here, right? But I'm not using the finger muscles, you know, exclusively because there really isn't enough muscle. To muscle the keys down, nor should you have to, right? It's 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 more like walking. So that sixth exercise, I mean, just and honestly, you know, five minutes maybe, you know, uh, don't go crazy with these exercises, you know, because your hands are delicate. Okay, uh, nice to 
if, yeah, so if you're a more serious student and you're practicing and several hours a day, and look, if, if you're a serious student with serious, what does that mean? I don't know. Well, somebody who has some ambition to do something, right? A, a calling, a, you're, you're pa passionate about what you're doing, you really want to learn, you know. <laughs> Good luck finding those people. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, if you're really passionate, you really want to learn, okay? It's also easy to kind of overdo it, right? So take your technical exercises and spread them out over the course of your practice session. You know, do, you know, five minutes at the beginning of every hour or, or you know, so maybe you have like three, three 10 minute sessions. Um, I used to say that, you know, probably no more than a quarter to a third of your practicing should be technical things. Now, you're going to be doing technical things anyway in your music, right? So, um, you know, you don't have to kill yourself, but certain things really, you know, really go a long way. It's very hard to play an instrument and not learn scales and arpeggios. It's very hard also to learn an instrument and just only learn scales and arpeggios, right? Yeah, I mean, you have to go beyond that at some point. And again, learning sixths, okay, that's something that can be really, really, really valuable. Um, also, maybe maybe going three, playing um, uh, three, four, five, three, four, five, three, four, doing a, a scale in sixths. So that could be, uh, that could be very valuable. One and three, two, one and four, one and five, three, four, five, three, four. Or you, there's different ones too, right? Three, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, right? Or three, four, five, three, four, five, four, five. Four, five. Why would you want to do different fingers like that? Well, because uh, it's a different sound and it's a different feeling. There's only two reasons to really do anything on the piano, okay? Either it sounds good or it feels good. Now, chances are, it, I, in a perfect world, you want it to sound good and feel good at the same time, right? But, you know, in the real world, it doesn't always happen. We have to do things, we have to play things that um, are kind of crazy, that almost seem impossible. And, you know, you just have to be brave, right? And, and go for it, okay? So, um, we may choose, we may choose fingering, let's say, that um, perhaps, uh, doesn't feel the best, but sounds really good. And, and it, it might seem like a kooky fingering, but we do it anyway for that reason. Another reason is, well, maybe it's maybe the fingering doesn't necessarily sound the best, uh, but it, practically speaking, it just fits in our hand and we have to use it, okay? So those are the two reasons. And usually it's a compromise of some kind, it's some, some kind of a compromise. But um, if you kind of look around the internet, uh, you'll see some very serious people practicing sixths. You know, and and you get a lot of mileage out of out of practicing um, practicing six like like that. And of course, you know that's a major key, right? What about what about minor keys? Okay, you know, I mean, so uh, let's C minor or A minor, harmonic minor, right? So. Uh, I mean, I'm not so sure. We'd have to <laughs> we'd have to kind of pick our notes. It's a little it's a little stranger playing in in a minor key. Um, I mean, this is that's melodic minor, probably ascending, right? You can do your melodic minor ascending and your natural minor descending. Uh, so so maybe like a. One didn't work out very well. I guess, yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> I mean, don't be afraid to experiment. No, so you play some wrong notes. So big deal. Okay. Uh, I don't do these all the time, as you can see. But okay, so A minor, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. That's the that's the melodic minor. So, okay. So I'm, I'm going to start on the A and uh, the C and A. Why? Because it just sounds good. I, what I want to hear is I want to hear this. 
I want to hear the melodic line. So I want to keep the melodic line on top. The thumb, by the way, let, let's, just, let's just be clear, okay? The thumb is not really connecting. You can connect. I mean, it's not like you can't connect. I, mean, I, can, I, can, I can kind of connect the thumb, just lifting and dropping the weight and dragging. I, I can kind of, but the, the thumb's really not meant to do that. The thumb, and also if you, if you have a lot of weight on the thumb, your hand's gonna get real tired. Okay, so real light on the thumb, short, staccato, you know, just the top voice, you know, you can, that's kind of why the two note slurs are nice, it relaxes the hand, gives, lets the hand breathe a little bit, you know, all that legato can be very tiring on the hand, but, you know, I'll do it uh, so you can watch here, okay, I'll do here. Look at that stretch, that stretch right there. That's a tricky stretch. Well, that was the wrong note. See, that's the right note. And then, right. And of course you can go back down. Going back down though, I would probably do natural minor. So, right. Right, ascending, descending, right. The lower, by the way, remember, remember our our tetrachord, our tetrachord groups, understanding minor scales, okay, um, A, uh, A, B, C, D, E, uh, uh, F sharp, G sharp, A, that's, that's our, uh, that's our natural, that's our natural minor. Right, that's our natural natural minor. This tetrachord over here, that's our minor tetrachord, and that's this. And this tetrachord over here, that's a major. Right? That's the same notes as the E major scale. Right? That's one way of understanding the um, why did I write natural minor? It's it's melodic. You didn't catch me on that one, guys. It's melodic. This is a this is a melodic minor scale, As, uh, ascending, right? Right, going up, going going up, right, going higher, right, and then natural going down, natural going down, descending. Okay, um, this tetrachord would no longer be major. It would now be Phrygian, P H R Y G I A N, right? That that scale would change. So when you have to compare, when you compare the melodic minor scale to the natural minor scale, four of the notes are precisely the same. It's the first four notes. First four notes never change, though. That's just a minor tetrachord. But the upper tetrachord uh, is different. Okay, those these these are disjunct tetrachords and of course the tetrachord in this case is always bound by the perfect fourth so you know it, it's kind of challenging if you think you know a scale in other words if you think you know a scale if you think you're really get really good at it and you're okay then challenge yourself and say hey you know i can play this scale i can play it you know and i can play in parallel or i can play in contrary great okay fine well, let's try it and try it in sixths, okay? And here's another easy way to sneak up on the scale, okay? There's no reason to play both notes at the same time, right? What you do is you just play one note, thumb, 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 thumb. Now, the thumb, again, going back to the thumb, that feels like it's sort of skipping, like a stone skipping on the water, you know? You throw a stone and skipping on it, right? That's more like a glissando. It's more like a glissando going up, okay? But the upper note, that is the note that you really want to connect. Now, see hear that? And notice, when I switch my finger, when I, when I go from five to four, see, I don't let the key all the way up. I don't let the key all the way up. I, right? That is the miracle of the modern piano. That was not true. That was not possible, right, on early 
the early piano forte invented by Cristofori in the 1700s at some point, in the late, late 1700s. Um, that's the whole big deal that you can connect notes. You're effectively pedaling with your fingers, right? You're controlling the dampers with your fingers. That's referred to in among technical people as a double repeating action. What do they mean by double repeating? Well, double repeating just meaning that there's a little part inside the piano, all those parts inside the piano that, that, that uh, like fall like dominoes, right? Those are, that's referred, those little parts are referred to as the action, the action parts. And there's one little part in there called the jack, and it kind of sits underneath a, a knuckle, and uh, um, you can look up all these parts, that, but it, it kind of, um, that's what, without going into great detail, that's what kind of keeps that hammer poised to restrike the string and, to, and keeps that, controls that damper, the damper wire, the damper being the part of the action that stops the sound, right? We always think of the piano action as making sound, but just as equally important, the part of the action that keeps the, the, the notes that we don't want to play, right? That, that, those are referred to as the dampers, so those little, little wooden blocks with little pieces of felt glued on them and uh, attached to a, a kind of a, a a wire, it's called a wire, you know, um, and you can watch them inside inside the piano. And there are different shapes of damper. Some of them are squared off. Some of them are wedges. Some of them are kind of like um, I forget what the term is, but it's not just one triangle. So 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 why would you want different damper shapes? Well, uh, when we play a note on the piano, we're really not vibrating one string, right? We're, we're vibrating a set of strings. Typically it's three, okay? At least, at least from, from a, you know, about the, the, the alto and soprano range, okay, right around here on up. It's three strings vibrating at the same time. And uh, that square block kind of sits on those three strings and, and it damps, the word damp, right? Uh, and please don't say dampen, okay? It's not dampen, just damp. To damp sound meaning to quiet. To dampen means to make it wet. So, um, but it sits on that group of of, of strings. Now, as the strings get lower in pitch, they get longer. And as they get longer, well, um, so that they don't get overly loud, right, uh, we don't use sets of threes anymore. We use sets of twos, okay? So a set of two strings would kind of use a like a triangular wedge that would go in between those two strings, and that would stop them from vibrating. And then, um, although, although um, there are instances uh, when um, going down lower, very low, we have one string, bass strings, which are very thick. They're kind of wrapped in copper. They're wrapped, they're thicker, so they don't have to be longer. And rather than a triangular wedge that fits in between two, it's kind of like a reverse wedge that kind of fits in, you know, oh, sorry about that. I hope I didn't offend anyone. Um, but that, that they're kind of, they kind of like fit in. Like here's the church, here's the steeple. Open the doors. I just had to do that. I like that. Do you like that? I like that. My mother used to do that. And here's here's the congregants. Now here's the people. Congregants wouldn't rhyme with steeple. It has to be people. That but here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the door. There's the people. There. Would it be? It wouldn't be there. It wouldn't be there. Is the people though? It's it's would be there are. There are the people, but we say there's the people. Isn't that it's a grammatical thing? But I digress. So um, you got to keep your sense of humor about this stuff. Or you can kind of go a little bonkers. So um, any anyway, uh, I was doing two fingers, right? I was going four, five, four, five, but you can go three, four, five. You can go and you decide on fingering based on what your musical intent is, okay? So ending on 4-5 might just, if you want a diminuendo, if you want to get softer, that might be easier to get softer that way, actually. Uh, just It's kind of just built into the fingering. You know, I, I sometimes I talk about this, this fingering um, that purportedly uh, Mozart used and his sister used. Did you know Mozart had a sister? A lot of people don't know Mozart had a sister. That was like apparently like a really, really, really good musician. Like we don't really know much about her, but, um, but the fingering that they used was very different than the fingering 
that we use now. Now we go, you know, like for a major scale, we go one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. They didn't do that. They would use up their fingers. They would go one, two, three, four, five, four, five, four. And by the way, four on the side of the finger, much better. Four, five, four. It's quite nice. You should try it. Now, descending fingering was different. Five, four, three, two, one. You use up the fingering. Two, one, two, and you end on two. It's a different, different kind of articulation. You can listen to how it crescendos. You can kind of dig in, dig in with more, dig in with these two fingers, and then you have a lot of control over this finger to end with. This, the thumb is, to me, the thumb, and to many people, the thumb is is a is a bit um, unwieldy. Okay, but that's much different than five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one. It doesn't make a lot of sense. In fact, I, I just uh, remembered I was reading. Um, so for, for you folks who may not have I've heard Arthur Schnabel, um, one of the great pianists, pedagogues, interpreter of Beethoven, wrote a wonderful autobiography, um, which you can get read for free on the internet. But he was talking about scale fingering um, as being kind of silly because you cro when you cross the thumb under, you have, you have the thumb on the subdominant, which is not very musical. You probably want the dominant to be the loudest, right? So, you know, that's kind of, uh, kind of a problem. Uh, maybe one, two, one, two, one, you know, one, one, that's an idea. Who says you can't do that? One, two, one, two, one, right? That's a possibility. So thinking about, you know, what you want to accomplish musically, right? And what's going to feel the best in your hand. But um, trying to break out of some of these patterns that get beaten into us at a young age, and look, rightfully so. I mean, you know, there, it's, it's helpful, right, to have a system of some kind, but it can also work against you. You know, all this educational material that we have is really wonderful, but um, we can't be too comfortable with it. We can't do it mindlessly because we have to, we have to remember, who's this we? I'm thinking, talking in the third person. You have, you have to remember that ultimately we want to make music, and so the fingering choices that we make are going to affect the musical outcome of what's going to happen. Well, that's all the time we have today. So, um... this is Jonathan at the piano lesson. Sayonara.